Is it possible to 3D print car parts or is it overhyped? We're going to 3D print a few parts from our BMW E30 build to find out. Once you have your car parts, you can find pre-made 3D files like this from Thingiverse or from other websites like Colts 3D. Now that you have a couple of car parts that you want to print, it's time to select a printer. And we're using this Creality Ender 3 Max Neo. The reason we love it is because it's less than 350 bucks and it has a pretty large build plate. It can print up to 11 inches wide and 11 inches tall. Up next is gonna be your software. We use Cura, which is essentially a free software that takes those 3D models that you downloaded earlier and converts them into something that the 3D printer can understand and print. To set up Cura, it's pretty easy. First find and add your 3D printer. This will load all the settings needed based on your model selection. All you have to do next is drag and drop your 3D file. And we just stick with the standard quality settings when printing with PLA filament. Click slice and your model is then ready to print. Once the model is sliced, we load the file onto a micro USB. On your printer, just select the file and confirm your print. Once your printer gets going, it's good to watch the first layer. That way you can find any issues right away. Here you can see that the first layer isn't sticking to our bed, so we had to cancel this print. Here is what happened. And basically the first layer as it was printing started to peel up from the bed. Now I think what happened was because we upgraded the bed on this 3D printer from a glass bed to a magnetic bed to make parts easier to take off, this now has affected what we call the extruder and the height that the extruder is from the bed. So when you print that first layer, that all has to be exactly precise and now the thickness has changed that. But this is something that's easily fixable and that you might have to do out of the box when you get your 3D printer. So let's fix it. First you need to adjust the nozzle height. Start by selecting Auto Home and then select Disable Stepper. This will let you freely move the hot end. Select Move Z and then zero it out. Then place a sheet of paper between the bed and the nozzle. At the center of the bed, start to adjust your Z offset. Change the Z offset until the paper moves between the bed and nozzle with a tiny bit of resistance. Now move to each corner and manually adjust the bed leveling screws to create the same resistance on the paper between the bed and the nozzle. Once that's done, run the leveling feature. The printer will fine tune leveling across the entire bed. Then save your settings. Now that the bed is level, we resliced our 3D file and things are starting to look a lot better. Here's the finished part. Take a look at that. That looks pretty nice. And on the back side, you can see that it actually also has a nice pattern and that comes from the magnetic bed. Now, we will be putting this part in forward, but if you wanted to print parts with that nice back look, you could print the part that's gonna be facing outward flat on the bed. But there's one other issue. I've been reading that PLA, which is what we use for indoor parts, doesn't work too well outside, especially for something that's gonna have the sun beating down on it. So we're gonna test a couple of different filaments to see which works better. To change the filament, disengage the extruder and just pull the filament out. It's better if you wait for the printer to cool down first. We're swapping our PLA filament with ABS filament. Just snip a sharp edge on the filament and then you'll be able to insert into the extruder much easier. Push the filament as far as it will go and then preheat the printer for ABS and use the extruder adjustment to feed the filament all the way through the nozzle. Now for ABS, you'll have to adjust a few settings in Cura. We'll share the details in the description and if you like this type of content, subscribe, like, and comment what else you think you'd like to see 3D printed. Here's how the ABS came out and it was a little bit tricky to print. You could also see that it has a little bit of curvature on the very bottom. So with ABS, you're gonna need a couple of different settings adjusted. 
And I think we would end up needing to put our 3D printer inside an enclosure to really help prevent warping. But we decided to print one more and we printed this. So this is actually PETG filament. And as you can see, it came out pretty decent. You can pretty much print with all the same settings that you use for PLA, except increasing the temperature. So it's a bit easier to print with, and it's supposed to be a bit better than PLA outdoor. So the real question is, how do they actually work? So let's put them to the test. We made our way outside, and the temp was around 51 degrees Fahrenheit, and the dash is already over 100 degrees. So we'll lay the PLA, ABS, and PETG on the top of our dash to see how well each one of them holds up to direct sunlight. So let's see what the results are after about one hour. First up is PLA. Oh wow, here where it was in the sun, it's already starting to warp pretty bad. I think it's fair enough to say that PLA is not gonna work well in your car. All right, so this is the ABS. We can tell this is the ABS one because it has that warpage at the bottom. But, I mean, it's solid. There's no sagging. And if I squeeze it, no change. So this is, this is good for, for outside, but it's harder to print. Let's check out the PETG. PETG is pretty solid. It doesn't have the sag because it printed pretty well on our printer without an enclosure and it looks pretty good. I mean, it's, it's just as solid as the ABS. So let's print a couple more parts in PETG and see how it goes. Next up is a slightly larger part, a colder intake that will replace one of our headlights on the BMW E30 build. So this part is gonna require supports which basically print extra material to support horizontal layers higher up in the print. You can change the support structure to tree. Trees are easier to remove and will make the part a bit cleaner, but they tend to increase the build time. Now you can affect the print time by changing the infill, which controls how hollow the inside will be. The higher the infill, the higher the build time. The infill pattern can also affect print time with this bigger part, we adjusted the infill density to 5% and changed infill to zigzag. We also changed the print speed settings to 100 and slightly increased our support speed to help reduce print time. You can play around with the different settings and see what values help save on print time by clicking on the estimator icon. With these settings, the print time will be a little over 10 hours. But as soon as we started to print, we noticed the supports weren't sticking to the bed, so we had to stop the print. In Cura, we slowed down the first layer of the support, and after that, things worked much better. Well, after 10 hours, here's what the print looks like. These might be a little hard to get out. Come on. Oh. Here you can see the bottom. It's a little bit rough. There's a little bit of stringing, but overall not too bad. So now we're gonna test these tabs to see how well they hold up. Okay, check this thing out. Isn't that sick? It mounted pretty well and it's holding pretty steady. It had two bolts that I was able to get 
I'm gonna have to puncture another hole into this headlight unit in order to get the third bolt in there, which is okay. But I'm super excited how this looks. Can't wait to get it in the BMW E30 project. So let's get on to the next part. Before the next print, we had to clean up some PETG gunk. A bit of Windex can help break things up with the scraper. If you get this when changing different filaments, the Z offset might have to be adjusted. And we keep our Z settings written down, so we don't forget them. Now this next part is where this 3D printer print size bed comes in super handy. That's to print one of these. This is a full size dashboard for our BMW E30 build. It's quite large, but we were able to get it to work after adjusting the model within Cura for our particular printer. Now we did have to pay around $20 for this particular 3D model. Now that model didn't come with a hole, so we actually had to cut one ourselves. But if you wanna start modifying 3D files or making parts yourself, you can use a software tool called Sharper 3D. And let me show you what we made from it. We created this super cool bezel for our screen, which overlays and covers the rough cutout. Now, yeah, you could modify the 3D file to have a cutout itself. We'll eventually do that, but doing small parts like this within Sharper 3D will really help you learn how to make files yourself. And it's pretty easy. So we are actually able to use a tool and create this basic shape. It's just a rectangular shape. We got our measurements, and then you can easily go into the tool and just drag shapes in order to create uh, something like that. We are also able to adjust the overall height of the bezel. You can even do a chamfer here. You can add or increase or decrease uh, the chamfer. Now, this didn't work too well for us because if you print the part down face down like this to get this nice stylization, from this particular print bed, be careful on your angles. These angles are up this way and you would have to add supports. And as you can see from the last part, supports, when you pull them away, they don't look that great. Once we created the bezel, we loaded it into Cura and it took maybe about two hours to print. As far as creating an actual dashboard 3D printed like this, you'd be surprised that it costs very little for the material. So for both of these combined, it's less than $5 in filament. Now, you can probably buy something like this and it'll cost you $350 for something customized made for you. Now, you will have to pony up for a 3D printer, but once you have it, you can print all kinds of stuff. And if you're interested watching the entire build of how we built this dashboard with the touchscreen, along with the Raspberry Pi as well, watch this video right here.